All right, what does uh, what goes into creating a new stock exchange? William O'Brien is here to tell us. He's the chief executive officer of Direct Edge. Direct Edge Holdings is the fourth largest U.S. equity market operator, and he was not only on hand when his new securities exchange launched. He rang the open opening bell on the stock exchange Good, on the uh, on your stock exchange, Bill O'Brien. His newest stock. Exchange. I was going to say, Bill. <laughs> so tell us what what is this whole idea of a, of a stock exchange? Because you've been in operation a while. You've had an electronic communications network. What's the difference between a stock exchange and an ECN, a communications network? Well, for us, it's really two separate transformations. And you're right. We were about 1% of the market three years ago. And as an ECN, we've grown to well over 10% market share on any given day. Uh, and and this is market share of people doing trades? Of all U.S. equity trading volume. So on some days, we've been over 2 billion shares a day. Now we average between between 1 and 2, typically, depending on what market volume is. So we made a transformation from, a, from an ECN, which is kind of SEC speak for when you do this as a brokerage firm to an exchange, and that was really two things. One, um, it obviously holds us to a higher regulatory standard, right? We're one of the few companies that were actively embracing greater government regulation. And there's some economic benefits for us, but also some surveillance and other burdens that we take on. But we also did a technology transformation at the same time. So when we migrated to becoming an exchange, it's on brand new technology in two brand new state-of-the-art data centers where our computers are housed, because what an exchange really needs to do to serve investors is changing rapidly. And our technology is going to allow us to do that. So as as a, an electronic communications network, you are offering the services of being able to buy, execute orders, buy and sell orders. Right, right. Well, that, that's not necessarily going to change with, with you becoming a, an exchange, is it? No, it isn't. But what, what exchanges have to do, at least if they're doing their job properly, is really innovate and respond. Market structure has become much more complex. Where you can get, as opposed to getting everyone physically together in the same room, there's now so many sources potentially about getting a trade done. And any good exchange has to replicate the original idea of what it means to be an exchange, matching in buyers and sellers in a way that makes sense and works for everybody, and really port that to a new era. So the improved technology Direct Edge has, um, combined with our conversion to exchange status, will help us do that more effectively for our customers, who are stockbrokers, but more importantly, help them help their customers, American investors, more effectively. Now, what about an initial public offering for Direct Edge? Because you're, right now, you're owned by companies like Goldman Sachs, for example. Yeah, Knight Capital Group, Citadel, and, and the Options Exchange, the International Securities Exchange. I think that's a possibility. I think what you've seen in the past, right, when you've had trading competition, meaning upstarts rise up and compete against some of the legacy exchanges, um, they've ultimately been co-opted and bought out by some of the bigger players. I worked for a firm called Brute that was bought by NASDAQ. The New York Stock Exchange bought Archipelago. But I think in this round of competition, um, you're seeing us, at least Direct Edge anyway, work for the, our ultimate goal, build a company that could endure, that could last over time. Uh, migrating to exchange status with the new technology is an important milestone towards that goal. Um, an IPO potentially could be that as well. In the short term, however, we're going to focus on executing on our mission with these new assets, this new technology, this new exchange status, and really continue to help our customers. And if we continue to execute, then we'll, you know, we'll look at the capital markets in the near future and decide whether or not an IPO could be the next milestone. What about the role of program trading in the exchange platforms of today? Is that where the money is? I don't think so. I mean, obviously, program or what some people call high-frequency trading is an important part of our business. It's important part of every exchange's business at this point. But I think how we've succeeded is not just looking at that customer segment, but also focusing on how we can better help retail brokers, institutional brokers, more traditional market makers, and helping them meet their own needs and the needs of their customers. And so you really, if you want to really grow to scale, you have to try to be uh, targeting a broader set of customers than just um, the high-frequency trader. You think that the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, is going to be putting out new regulations governing high-frequency trading? I mean, because a lot of people have talked about how it doesn't necessarily offer the liquidity that they represent, but also that it creates huge market volatility. I think you have to distinguish high-frequency trading, as most people think of it, from high-frequency technology. And really, technology has transformed the stock market like it has every other industry. It's transformed prop trading, which is what most people think of the high-frequency trader as, but also every other part of the industry. And so it's, it's right for the regulators to be both proactive and reactive in adapting the framework to this new technology, because to some degree, it enables great new capabilities, right? An average investor can now execute a trade via their cell phone in less than a second from anywhere on the planet. But also, it enables bad actors to affect their schemes in, in new ways 
ways. And so I think they're right in taking an overarching view, but I really respect Mary Shapiro and the, and the staff of the SEC about taking a very empirical, dialogue-driven approach to these issues as opposed to reacting very quickly, unless it's really readily identifiable as a risk. In, in this new exchange that you're describing, uh, are the trades uh, sort of done without sort of revealing who's on the other side of the trade? I mean, because a lot of uh, institutional traders, they want to do trades, but they don't want to necessarily reveal their hand. Absolutely. I mean, that, and that's a, that goes back to before markets were electronic, right? So we have a variety of tools available um, to help people minimize what, what traders will call market impact, whether it's keeping the trades anonymous so no one knows if they're buying or selling against uh, a large mutual fund or hedge fund manager that might be viewed as having more information. But we've also delivered other products. One, one product is a midpoint match where in between the best bid and the best offer, we can have people anonymously meet to both get better prices than you might even see in the display quote. We did over 34 million shares in that product the first day as an exchange. So there's a variety of ways we can help people not only control the impact of their tradings, not reveal their hand, but actually get better prices when doing so at the same time. Now, I'm sure you've noted the results of many of the major banks and brokerage firms talking about trading. The results down. Are you seeing that change as well? I think that's right. And I think it's a function to some degree of, of investor confidence. And there's there's two sets of investor confidence that I, that I focus on. I think the most overwhelming one is investor confidence in the underlying economy. We need to get job creation happening again. We need to get capital formation happening again. And that's going to get people excited about trading stocks, both at the retail investor level, at the institutional investor level. Um, and that will, that will start to create a virtuous cycle. Separate and apart from that, you need to instill confidence in the underlying market structure. The things we've done, Direct Edge was directly involved at their efforts coming out of the flash crash back in, back in May and very quickly put some circuit breakers on the books that, while they may not be perfect, go a long way to remediating some of the risk of you know, penny trades and kind of outrageous results happening. So if we work on both things, hopefully waiting a little more towards the underlying economy, I think we'll get investors more confident. All right. I want to thank you very much. Bill O'Brien coming to us as the chief executive of Direct Edge, setting some light on the idea of a new exchange. Congratulations.